So the lore of Fortnite will probably never be featured on this channel, can you imagine? And now that I have probably lost half my subs for this joke, totally worth it. Sorry guys, no 100 drops, no ninja, no Fortnite. So let's move on to something entirely different. I know I said I was going to wait until October before covering this game, but it's time to get these spooky boys out on the market. The Regenerator, which is actually not spelled how you think it is, is a creature in Resident Evil series that is the definition of an anxiety attack when you first encounter them. As there truly is no way that you would know how to kill this thing and what its weakness may be. But rest assured, one of its greatest strengths is also one of its greatest weaknesses. So let's dive into the lore and morphology of this nightmare-fueled super infected. First and foremost, let's discuss how this creature actually came to be. In the Resident Evil universe exists a disease known as the Las Plagas, which is going to be purely a form of parasite that also appears to have physical effects as well as mind control effects that are clearly visible. It is clear during the game that being infected with even one of these creatures is enough to start taking the human out of the driver's seat concerning consciousness. In fact, even as an agent, you are infected with the parasite and at certain points in the game, you lose ability to control yourself. What's the most disturbing aspect of this is I had made mention of it during the Flood episodes, but I must bring it up again. There is a parasite right now on Earth called Toxoplasmosis. I had to give a presentation on it during my senior seminar. This parasite controls the mind of mice and makes them actually become sexually attracted to the smell of cat urine. Upon infecting humans, it will also make humans want to get more cats. This is because the parasite finishes its breeding cycle inside of the cats. So it's not too far-fetched to think that this parasite, known as the Las Plagas, could have kind of the same effect, if not a little more profound. But going back to the regenerators, they are going to be supercharged infected. Really done more as an experiment than a form of natural infection, the person has multiple of these parasites implanted into their bodies, and the effects are going to be rather extreme. But we will get to this morphology in a moment. One of the creepiest aspects of this creature is going to be its breathing. You will know it's in the area at any given time because you will hear this raspy, gassing, hissing noise that will exist within your nightmares. The slow and steady pace of this creature is going to give it quite an unsettling gait as it makes its way towards you. So, what exactly are you going to see as this thing approaches? An extremely toothy grin. The overall shape of the Regenerator has really not been changed too much. It's going to be a quite familiar form. We all know it. We all love it. It is a humanoid form. The creature has maintained all of its regular human appearances concerning limbs and proportions, reminding you that this thing did in fact used to be a person. Some of the creatures in Resident Evil look completely different and it's like, well, yeah, that sucks for whoever that happened, but it doesn't actually look like a person. This thing definitely looks like a person. There are going to be some changes, however. The overall height of the creature is put at about 7 feet 5 inches or 2.26 meters. Just for layman's term, if you want to envision it, that's like, I think, the height of Yao Ming. It is also going to be covered in a thick gray skin. This skin is actually going to be tougher than normal, presumably due to the parasitic infection bolstering the body, which in reality at this point, I suppose that would make it more of a symbiotic relationship once the parasite has full control. The arms of the creature are very much normal looking, but it does appear as though the forearms have been lengthened to about one and a half times their normal size, suggesting that there has been some skeletal changes made to the organism, but there are few in number. The legs are going to be basically normal looking to be honest, nothing really much can be said about them except that there is a possibility that maybe the muscle mass has been increased and really this is kind of to be expected as if the creature becomes enlarged you need to have more muscle to support it but they're also going to be covered in the gray skin that covers the rest of the body which provides extra protection from weapons and attacks in general. Now we start getting to the actual interesting part of this creature. If you look at the abdomen and thoracic area you can see it is a little bit distended. The reason for this is that the Las Plagas appears to congregate around the center mass and latch onto the organs and muscle of a person in this area. The same can be said for the back where they will also latch on and if there's any around the spinal area that's going to give them much more control of the organism. The head, at least in my opinion, is one of the more interesting portions of this creature due to the clear changes that have affected this person. The head is going to be completely hairless. No eyebrows, no beard, no head on their hair, nothing. The eyes actually appear 
appear to glow an orange color suggesting that there is some sort of internal biochemical processes resulting in the regenerator creating light from its eyes or bioluminescence, which does make sense and that will be covered here in a second. The nose has completely disappeared from the creature's face, leaving this thing looking like Lord Voldemort. And then we come to the mouth. Sporting several knife-like teeth, these are going to be basically a good way to attack anything and anybody. Not only that, but the jaw can open to inhuman proportions, suggesting that the creature's jawbone has been altered to perhaps be hinged like that of a snake, which basically means that it can detach and open up even wider to fit your entire shoulder inside of its mouth. Moral of the story though is, this regenerator will pursue and bite any humans in the area, taking out large chunks and piercing veins and arteries, causing them to quickly bleed out wherever they may be. Now on to the actual effects of the Las Plagas. While the regenerator may look scary, its actual capabilities are much more frightening. Upon shooting a regenerator, you may notice that your bullets do absolutely nothing to it. So you fire again as we all would, and it still continues to slowly and steadily march towards you. You may attempt to take an arm or a leg off, but it still, much like the hunters from Dead Space, can regenerate its limbs, and the damage you caused will really not affect its combat effectiveness. You have your friendly neighborhood parasite to thank for this. The Las Plagas grouped together in the body have the ability to form tentacles and a tentacle network that when damage occurs to any part of the body, they are able to fuse skin and organs back together, like let's say get shot in the stomach or chest, it will fuse them back together and then heal the creature quickly. When a limb or head is taken off, the tentacles will jut out from that area and form a foundation for the new limb or new head to grow, which as to be expected will happen rather quickly. These tentacles appear to also have offensive capabilities as well, the first being that they can stretch their limbs well beyond the capability of ours. Arms can stretch forward, clearly going well beyond the capability of the joints of the creature, which that says to me that the tentacles are actually increasing the length of the arms, pulling joints out of socket, and then connecting them back together, which means that the tentacles are going to wrap around the bones themselves, and if they need to be stretched out, the tentacles can stretch them. If they need to be contracted, they can contract them back into place, giving it the overall humanoid form, but allowing it for much greater range and capabilities. The next offensive and also defensive capability of the tentacle are going to be the giant spikes that shoot out of the body. The regenerator has the strength to pull you in and bear hug you or even just being around you. When it does, these spikes will come out and pierce the body of any human unlucky enough to check on it or come into contact with it. To explain the rapid healing, this is actually going to be a consequence of the Las Plagas artificially speeding up the metabolism of the person to ridiculous proportions. The parasite will interact with the body overhauling all these standard processes and healing is going to be one of them. This also explains why the rapid somewhat deep breathing exists in this creature. In an effort to sustain the supercharged metabolism, a lot of oxygen would be needed to fuel it. However, this is going to majorly screw with the internal chemistry of the person. Much like enlarging a shrew, and if you've ever done this thought experiment, it's pretty cool, uh, judging if you took a shrew, right, and you made it the size of an elephant, because a shrew's metabolism is so much faster than that of a elephant's metabolism, the shrew enlarged to an elephant would explode very quickly, whereas if you took an elephant and shrunk it down to the size of a shrew, the elephant would freeze very quickly. Kind of a cool way to think about metabolism in general. But just like with the regenerator, this is going to be its downfall as well. There are a few ways to kill the regenerator. The first is going to just be a straight up rocket launcher. This will make easy short work of anything because of the concussive force it will kill all parasites. Next, this is really not going to be as effective, but you can do it if you really wanted to. You could just keep shooting at it. Eventually your bullets will pierce what needs to be killed, but the standard is going to be an infrared scope with a rifle. Upon looking at a regenerator with an infrared scope, you may notice that this creature actually has a very low body temperature. Strange considering the metabolism has been pushed to superhuman levels, but it appears that most of the energy from these interactions goes to the parasites as they glow bright red. So in this aspect, it is completely parasitic. Upon shooting the parasites, the body will undergo changes that leads to its demise. The body is still running at, we'll say, 400% normal rate, and this will lead to a buildup of energy and heat, which will ultimately cause the creature to explode, just like the shrew, enlarged to an elephant's size. This is really the only way to put it down for good. Otherwise, it will just keep regenerating
regenerating and flopping towards you, and as the name implies, that's what it does. It regenerates. So, that about does it for this episode. As we approach Halloween, and I know it's still two months out, but your boy is prepared now as I love Halloween, let me know what you thought about this video down in the comments. I know I kind of made that joke. It started in the Discord. I'm sure I probably have pissed off a lot of people with that joke, but it'll be okay. <laughs> My next video should be covering Master Chief versus the Doom Slayer in a collaboration with Hidden Xperia again. Should be coming out uh, the 14th around there. I hope you guys did like the video, and if you liked it enough, why not consider subscribing to the channel to stay up to date on when I post. I will drop my Twitter, Discord, and Patreon link in the description. If you would like to consider donating, that is of course the best way to support this channel. Currently, I am saving up for a PS4 so that I can break into Resistance, Last of Us, and many other games I have yet to play so I can actually start making videos on those. But before I get too far, I would of course like to thank my patrons. At the Scientist tier, we have Layla Elizarin and Master BC. Next up, at our resident level, we have G. Anderson, Richard Muhlenberg, and Alex Parks. With their PhD in genetics, we have Divine Whisper and John Russo. Next up, with their Masters in Biology, we have Adam Hartswick, Andrew Lawson, Brian H. Briggs, Cameron Smith, and Laffy No Skill. Achieving their Bachelors in Morphological Sciences, we have, unfortunately, I know how to say this now, Ahigao Comics, Average Soul, Dustin Ellis, Ember Saffron, Jacob N. Passon. Nailed it. Joseph Radical and Natsuki Chiaki. Thank you guys for your patronage. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and this new addition to my channel, which will now be in rotation with everything else. I will see y'all in the next one. Thank you.